and and I'm pretty sure like Kevin Gayor or not Gayor um Vinod they're at a conference today and okay Sean's out uh, Sean's out yeah okay so, so we got everybody yeah all right we're recording so welcome everyone to the chaos community weekly meeting it is Tuesday the 17th and I'm Elizabeth chaos community manager so it's good to see everybody I was not here last week so I appreciate everyone chipping in and carrying on in my absence. Um, I'll drop the minutes here one more time. And glad to hear that your dad's getting a little better every day. He is. Yeah. So for those who don't know, my dad was critically ill last week and um, it's been rough. It's been a rough two weeks in the middle of all that. I, I closed on a house and then my car died. So I had to go buy a new car yesterday. Like, yeah, I, I just, yeah. You bought a new it's car been, too. Yeah, you right. This? <laughs> yeah, because that's what you do. You know, two days after you buy a house, is you, you go buy a car. Like, yeah. And helping your dad and, and like family, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, my son's graduating in a couple of weeks, so there's like all this end of the year stuff going on. So, yeah, I'm just been glad. Like when May and June, June is looking also very busy. So I'll just like maybe July. I think it's good. <laughs> like I'm just looking forward to July. Where, yeah, okay, but it'll be all right day at a time. Um, but yes, he is doing better. They're going to move him. He's still in critical care. They're going to move him to a regular hospital room, hopefully today. So bless. Okay. Nurses and doctors are absolutely angels on earth. That's all I got to say. Those in healthcare, man. Yeah. I cannot say enough good things about them. Um, let me, I'm sharing. That's what I'm doing. I was like, wait, what am I doing? I don't know. What day is it? Who knows? Okay. Here we go. So if you have not added your name to the agenda, that would be awesome if you could do that. Um, just so we know you're here. If you don't want to, that's also fine. And if you don't want to turn your camera on, we always say, that's also fine. You can just chat in the chat and we will include you the best we can. Um, looks like we don't have very much on the agenda today. So uh, if you have things you want to bring up, feel free to just add them, not a big deal. Um, I think Ruth probably added this once to chat about the GitHub's maintainer month session. So I will let. Yeah, I, I did add that. So we've made like a lot of progress from like last week, thanks to Sophia and Uhoma. So if you scroll down, so the Doodle link is still there. So um, can you scroll up a bit like at the start? <laughs> Yeah, so um, yeah, the Doodle link is still there. We've had some votes. So in case you've not voted, you know, on, on the poll, you can, you know, click your available dates. So uh, because I, I plan on like, you know, making the issue, submitting everything this week. So if you've not voted, you can still vote. And then we decide on, um, like we decide on the time that we want to, you know, do this. So that's one. Then we've also like made progress with um, an agenda. So um, Sophia kind of like put in like, if you look at the agenda here, we have like, um, you know, the discussion prompt. So if you put like in a discussion prompt on how we want to take out that session of experience share on burnout. So if you have like any feedback on that too, or things you think we can add, you can put it in the doc um, and also like the slide share, probably do a slide share of what we have in the burnout metric. Um, you can put your thoughts there as well. Then um, I'm looking at for the registration link. I, I think we could, you know, use Google Forms, like a template, a chaos templated Google Form to maybe do like the field something about like what fields we want to put in the form. I know there's email, definitely email and your name, <laughs> but I can't think of like any other fields. Uh, then we also have, um, Roma has worked on some graphics. If you scroll down, um, we have like three, keep scrolling. So yeah, we have like one, this is one, two, three. So it's just like options that which one we want to go for. So you can put in, okay, this one's better. And then we'll go with the ones that have like 
of la vote. <laughs> so yeah, these are like the options we have. Thank you, Omar, for working on this. So yeah, that's the updates we have from the burnout session. So by the end of you, like by the end of this week, I should submit like the issue on the GitHub repository because they have like a repository where you put in details and then I think they add it to their site. So yeah, so by the end of this week, we should wrap this all up and you know, do that. These images are absolutely wonderful. Oh my gosh. So if we want to vote, we should just drop a comment in the doc. Yeah. Or okay. Yeah, comments in the doc. Awesome. And then this will go on the GitHub thing, or we'll just use this for our stuff, or where will this go? Yeah, this would also go on because I think they have to put it on their site. Like if we go to the site, there's a place to put like an image, and this will also be for like promotion from our own end as well. Awesome. Like making sweets and all that stuff. So yes, yeah, so still need help with, if you have anything to add on the agenda, if um, then on the registration link, like the fields um, to put on the Google form. Yes, yeah, so those are things need help. And then the doodle -doo poll too, yeah. Yeah, and then I can make that form under the chaos Gmail or... Um, yeah. It would be great on that the chaos Gmail, I think more like official. So I think Sophie put in a comment about projects. Sophie, if you want to talk about that. Yeah, just I just said I'd love to let it know a little bit more about this is just sure. for the registration interest. Uh, like, okay, yeah. okay, thank you. I would add that. Like you mean what project the person um the the, the person registering is yeah, I just just as a way to have a little bit more context, I mean, I think you can have any context to be in the session. And if you found the page, then you probably are interested in the topic. Um, but I thought it might be interesting to know a little bit about what folks have experience with. But they also like we can make that optional. I don't I don't want to yeah. like because I don't want to ask too much up front because that might change what people are comfortable sharing. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we'll add that as well. Yeah, I think that's awesome. That's a, that's a really good, uh, good thing to add and make it optional. I agree. Yeah. So yep, yeah, that's that's all from this. Excited for it. So. Me too. So action items for everyone in the community is to do the doodle if you yeah. want to participate and you want to be part of this. Um, also add to the agenda if you think of something you want you want to add. Um, any other questions if you think are important, and then vote on the graphics. Yep. Awesome. I had one comment, Ruth. What would you think of having a dedicated note taker there during the session? Because it might be nice to also tell attendees that like everything we talk about has the potential to inform the burnout metric currently you know could help change the way that we think about the burnout metric and if we have a note taker we might be able to capture those comments a little bit more easily and then get that work i, I think people like to see their comments like help others in the future and um yeah. improve the metric might be good yeah something also something that we we thought about like I think if you see the conversation uh, between me and Sophie we're like so if we're going to like you know want on the experience share we want people to you know folks to like be open and you know sometimes with sharing openly you do not want to be quoted or you know it's sure so yeah so adding like that adding in note taker I don't know how it might it might affect like you know, sharing, sharing the experience on burnout or would the not can we add the note taker during maybe the slide share or so we do not make a step on, on folks sharing about burnout. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a point well taken. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, so I definitely think we should probably not record um, for that reason. Um, but I do think what we could do for note taking is if we have everyone's email, then we can share the notes with them directly before they go anywhere. So if everyone's in the room and they're comfortable sharing in the room, we can take notes anonymously if we don't attribute it to any individual person. Um, I guess what we can do is in the introductions, describe our process and provide a way for attendees to redact or to remove if they're not if they're uncomfortable if any specifics are shared because I think what I guess in my own experience of things like this if you're well coached you can just kind of talk without specifics so you could talk about a time that you were experiencing these things but without saying a specific project or a specific person because there could be those aspects involved, if there's an individual or a particular project that's known for some of this behavior, like those aren't really things that you might want to be on record talking about. So we can have prompts saying only state these things if you're comfortable, if you want to state them, but then say it's off the record and basically kind of coach people of how, how to talk about it as well as how to, how to redact after the fact, um, then I think we can probably come up with a mechanism that allows us to take notes and share it in a way that everyone's comfortable. So yeah, that's, that sounds great. I think Matt is adding in some notes. I'm so bad at taking notes when I'm listening. <laughs> One of the things when I do interviews, I say to people, I'm like, if you, and it's, these are anonymous interviews. And I say, if you go to bed tonight and you're like, oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. Like, just send me an email. <laughs> I will happily, Take it out. And we don't publish the interview like as a straight transcript. You know what I mean? So to Sophia's point, like we can give people the opportunity to not only see the transcript or see the notes, I should say, but then also just reflect. Like, don't worry, we're not putting this out there like tomorrow <laughs> or this afternoon. You have a chance to sleep on it. And if you're like, I should not have said that, then no problem. We'll happily remove it. <laughs> Matt, you're just like bringing back all my flashbacks. Matt, I used to do press interviews in my last job. Terrifying yeah. because they don't show you what they're going to publish. And then it goes live and you're like, did I say that? Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Sorry, PR people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Any other things to talk about with, um, with our, our burnout session here? Nothing much. So I think when when I when everything is sorted out, I'll submit like some something for sharing, maybe content to share out via Twitter as well. And as well as um, GitHub is going to promote, I think we should also promote from our end. So yeah, that's that's it. Awesome. Anybody have any other comments or questions for Ruth and the team? All right. Um, awesome work, you all. Fantastic. Um, next thing on our agenda is tomorrow. That's tomorrow, right? Yes, May 18th is tomorrow. Um, we're just going to have a short, maybe 30 minute, 20, 30 minute session um, just to, as an info session if you are interested in being one of our badgers for the DEI event badging initiative. because so we are looking to expand that team. Um, if you're not familiar with that, program, um, that is the, the program where we have open source events submit applications. Um, they tell us about how they're centering diversity, equity, and inclusion in their event. And um, it's based off of our DEI metrics, roughly. And so um, then we, we look through their application. We have two reviewers that manually look through that application and kind of verify and ask questions if there's anything that needs to be clarified with the event organizer and then we issue a badge for them. So if they're doing great, um, they'll get a gold badge. If they're doing, uh, if there's room for improvement, maybe they'll get a bronze badge level. Um, so it just depends on kind of how, how um, far they've gone in thinking about DEI in their event. So because that requires a manual process, we do have a team of people, but um, we are continuing to get more applications all the time. And so we would really like to expand that team. So if that's something that um, sounds interesting to you, it's a great way to contribute to chaos and also help event uh, open source events center DEI and their events a little better, um, then 
by all means, join this info session or reach out to me, Elizabeth at, I'll put this in here too, Elizabeth at chaos.community. If I can type. Um, if you can't make that info session, but you are interested and want to learn more, just send me an email and we can set up something um, just with the, you know, one-on-one, -on -one. no problem at all. Um, before I move on, are there any questions about that? Any questions about the DEI badging initiative? Anything that I can answer for anybody? I, not on, on that, but it's just with the project badging. So I'm going to start putting together kind of what this might look like structurally for project badging. But I, I would just love if anybody, it's kind of like the note taking. If you're thinking about project badging and you're like, this is a really bad idea and here's why. <laughs> like if you could tell me, I because we've been kind of moving forward, um, you know, like kind of slowly on this, which is great. And we've been talking about it and it's always kind of been out there, but I just want to make sure that if anybody has like real concerns or things that they might see on the horizon that we should be looking out for I, any, it doesn't matter what it might be, but that would be great. Um, yes. Is there a doc somewhere, Matt? That... No, this is what I need to start. Like I need okay. to start kind of, we've just been kind of talking in the minutes about it in, in the DEI working group about it. And so I need to start assembling all of that stuff and probably like putting together a repository in the badging org you know, for project badging, we may have one in there anyway. Yeah, but. there might be one in there. Um, yeah, I would look. Yeah, there might be one in there. If not, yeah, feel free. Okay. Just start one. Um, all right. And then we'll just share that back with the community next week. That yeah, right? that sounds good. That would be great. Um, okay. And then... Um, yeah, any other questions about badging before we move on? Comments? Okay. Um, and because I missed last week, were there any other follow-up things that we wanted to talk about from last week to this week? Here's a refresher of what we talked about last week. Yeah, so we had, um, there was some nice um, a conversation about Kind of like uh, what do we call them? like welcoming um, workshops in Kubernetes and um, and how well they work and how well they or don't work <laughs> as was pointed out in Slack. Um, so we're we're just trying to think of ways that we can encourage people to join software. And the reason that Kubernetes came up is because I think things like Augur and Grimoire Lab are pretty complex, like Kubernetes. It's not as complex, but like it, that can be a real barrier for people. So Don and Sophia had kind of commented on the experiences and some of the structures out there for Kubernetes. And I'm not, I was thinking about it today. I'm not sure that workshops are the way to go if if we're gonna rely on experiences from other other communities. I, I'm just not sure how to how to do that. So yeah, I mean. Because Sean, Sean had run some virtual workshops for um, onboarding people to the community. And I feel like they worked pretty well, but it was a lot of like that pre-work of like getting your environment set up, which was where the, the problems were. Ruth, you got a comment? Yeah, I have a comment. So first, in my opinion, Kubernetes is complex. It is. <laughs> yeah, but so... Um, I think I've also been thinking about exploring software contributions in chaos because I have like background in Python, which is, um, which is I, I think most of the time, uh, not quoting stats, but many folks get to like start with Python because of, you know, it's you know, relatively easy. Like it's easy to understand, you know, syntax is like easy. So I think that we can find ways to attract contributors with software with, since I, I think Grimoire Lab and um, Augur are on like Python, right? So yeah, and then I think when 
um, Sean used to run those workshops, they were effective. So if we could look for, or if we could look at ways to promote Augur, you know, find ways where simple issues, you know, good first issues, something about documentation, improving like some part of the software that like low lifts, you know, to get in contributors to understand. And then about setting up, um, I think we could do like, um, if there are no restrictions with like um, system set up, like depend, regardless of your system, you can set up Augur or Grimola. We could do like, you know, mini tutorials, recorded stuff that we could put on YouTube on how to set up Augur or Grimola so that when contributors come into, you know, they see those tutorials and they can get started by looking at them. You know, to reduce the uh, problems that uh, folks have when they want to set up. I said a lot of things at the same time for you. I mean, I, I like this. I'm not, we, do we know like how many of the workshops have resulted in people staying around? That's my. That's a great question. I don't know. Um, we would have to go back to last year and try to, you know, correlate um, people who are still here in the community. Um, I know it was really helpful for the Google Summer of Code students. Um, I think that's kind of what it was geared toward, but, and I think Sean did record them. So they probably are out on our YouTube somewhere, <laughs> but they're not super easy to find, I don't think. Um, so, and there were just like the recording of the call. So it was like very individualized um, setups and interactions. So maybe there's room for a little more general kind of help with people, for people. Sophia, were you gonna say something? I was just thinking about it because we were, um, Sean and I interviewed, I think it was Yash in Chaos Cast, and I feel like my brain is losing, so I don't feel completely positive about all these things. Um, talking about his experience onboarding into the Chaos community and particularly Augur software project. And a lot of his observations were on mentorship versus more of the hands on workshops. So I think the workshops are important for overcoming the installation and setup barriers, but after that to stay engaged and to continue to develop in this space, it was sort of, that was really, that was kind of the salient point that stuck with me, um, not just sort of the asynchronous resources, but the availability of having a person that you could go to, to kind of help you cross the chasm from no context to more context and feel uncomfortable in the space. Um, but that's not really a very scalable. <laughs> Uh, it depends on people. So I think there's probably space for both, but I'd be curious if, as we're thinking about sort of the impact of workshops on people sticking around and sort of if we can measure that and compare that with any of our other mentorship programs that we're participating in, then we can kind of understand where to focus our efforts on what's more valuable to help nurture this community. I think it would be awesome if we had some previous Google Summer of Code students um, that have stuck around or else come back um, and act as more general mentors. Like instead of everything having to kind of fall on Sean, <laughs> I feel like it always falls on Sean. I right? agree. And so if we can have, you know, like a, a little umbrella or a network of, of folks that know how to do this stuff and keep it going and help others, then we can like grow that and then they can help others. And yeah, so, um, but sadly it kind of all, all goes back to Sean. So maybe that should be our priority is just like kind of unloading his brain into like other people and getting, you know, and I know that that's um, part of the work this summer is to kind of document some of this stuff and make sure the documentation is up to, up to speed, but even just like you know, somebody that could just like host a weekly, like a hangout almost like we do with office hours, but with software, but it wouldn't necessarily have to be Sean, just someone that knows a lot about Augur that could just kind of people could pop in and ask questions or whatever. I don't know. It's just a thought, but. Um, I, I like that. And listening to Sophia talk, like 
what you're describing requires that kind of we as community members identify who those people are. Like, it's not, you're right, Elizabeth, we need to have it not just be Sean. Because like right now, I think if somebody came to say Slack and was asking a question about event badging, there's like 10 of us who could kind of answer the question probably. And if not 10, you know what I mean? We can kind of get people point in right now. I think if it's Augur, we're always just like, let me ping Sean. And we just tag Sean and it ends up there. And so we don't have 10 people who can answer those questions. And same with like Chaos Con. Like we have a whole group of people who can answer a bunch of questions about Chaos Con or the way the metric working groups kind of, you know, function. We have a lot of people that can answer questions like that. Um, and, and the reason we have that is because we have a lot of people in the community who can answer those questions. So to your point, Sophia, like we need to find those people here in the community, if it's Druv, or if it's the Google Summer of Code students, or if it's, I, I have no idea who those people might be, but I like that. I have a question for, um, cause I did send a few people to the Augur Slack channel. So if anybody is on the call that has kind of utilized that channel and gotten some answers from someone not Sean, <laughs> I would be really interested to hear um, if you had a good if you had a good experience if you were able to get your your question answered um, by somebody else. So if anybody has that and wants to speak up, that'd be great. I don't know, maybe not. But maybe the Augur Slack channel is a way to start fostering that kind of sense of community. If we just kind of point people there and say, hey, if you know about Augur or if you have a question about Augur, let's put it in Slack and not have to, you know, go directly to Sean every time. I don't know, just a thought. Agreed. All right. so we have, we have to make, I was gonna say we have to make sure we don't just say, okay, Sean, this is now something you have to do. <laughs> like we can't right, like, yeah. just like, <laughs> like keep it going in that direction. <laughs> yeah, because also that's the other half of it is that Sean feels, you know, personally, well, I mean, obviously he has a vested interest in Augur. And so he's, you know, very excited to talk about it and things, but I don't want him to also feel like, you know, it's okay, Sean, to let someone else answer the question. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about you, Sean, in case you're worried. Yeah, I was thinking he's probably feeling this in Finland right now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good news, Sean. Good, good talkings about you. Nothing bad. Okay, so I guess we can move on if nobody else has anything else. No, thank you. Okay. All right, so let's go to the next one, which I'm so excited about. The she code africa project and we have i believe precious and midi are both here right yes there they are yay um we if you have not done this and we'll probably get an influx now of people going to the, <laughs> to the newcomers channel go to newcomers in slack and type newbie and you will get some wonderful feedback from a wonderful bot that will help you find your way um, Precious and Mide, if you would like to say a couple of words about the bot, about your experience with SheCode Africa um, and chaos, like whatever you all want to say, what you're doing next, I don't know, whatever you want to say, we would just love, love to hear from you. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Okay. Hi. So this is the wrap-up um, meeting. So there's really nothing more to say. It's been a great opportunity. We've learned a lot. I, for one, have never built a bot. This is the first time I'm building one, and it was a great experience. And the community and the team is also fantastic. Thank you for having us. Precious, did you want to say anything about the project or? Um, hi. Um, okay, like Mide said, um, it was it was fun building it actually, <laughs> and um, I think um, 
we're both still going to be part of the chaos community. We want to contribute in other ways. So um, we'll probably, you'll probably be seeing us around a lot in your DM, Elizabeth. <laughs> Because um, I'm kind of, we're still trying to figure out which projects to contribute to moving forward. And um, we're also looking out for feedback on the board for ways we can improve and such. Yeah. But it's been nice. It's been nice working with the community. Shout out to Ruth, Matt, and Elizabeth for the help during the project. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so I'm just so excited um, for this. And, and you all have now set the framework up so um, we can just grow it if we have other things to add, um, you know, about chaos con or anything, you know, that we need that we feel like people might have questions on, we can add that to the bot and make everybody's lives a little easier, especially for our newcomers. So absolutely fantastic job. Thank you so much. Um, you got so much done in such a short period of time. I can't believe it. It's really, really, really great work. So thank you. And I'm so happy to hear you're both going to stick around because we will miss you if you leave. So um, yeah, so awesome job. And um, there is a repo if someone um, has some ideas or anything. Um, it's called the Welcome, Welcome Chaos Bot. Is that right? I don't remember. Where number. is it? Because there's... I don't know, last week we were talking about the work in the DEI audit team. Yeah. Um, the bot, and there was a lot of interest from other communities about how this yeah. works and what it looks like. So I would love to share this yeah. work. Here it is, Chaos Black Bot. Okay, cool. I'll put that in the chat too. Oh yeah, Midi already did that. Um, so yeah, here is all the stuff and documentation, how to contribute. Um, all of that. So awesome job, not only on the bot, but also writing everything down for us <laughs> so that we can add to it and change it if needed and how, you know, how we get into it and run it and things like that. So just an absolutely amazing job. I'm so, so, so pleased with this. Um, yeah. It well, so fast. I know, right? <laughs> it's already <laughs> over. <laughs> What? I know. And we have this wonderful thing. No kidding. It was amazing. I'm wondering too if I don't like it might be cool in one of our DEI groups too, like if Elizabeth or Mitty or Precious, you could join us and, and talk about the work that you had done. Because like I said, I know that other folks have a pretty big interest in like a welcoming bot just like this yeah i know on the audit team some folks want to see how you know it was done so yeah totally um yeah um, i could do that so we've actually done so just let's, if you let us know when the meeting will be for us, we'll keep just joining, it's fine. Cool, so the meeting time, is that what you were wondering? Yeah, so it's, um, I, I can send you an invite. Our next meeting is Monday, the 20th of May, but I could maybe, I would be looking at the 6th of June, might be a, a good time. And the meeting is at, it's 1030 US Central. So it's a half hour earlier than this meeting on Monday, the 6th of June. That's fine. Yeah. So 40 is around 4.30 Nigerian time, so. Okay. Okay. So. Precious and Mitty, I'll just, I'll probably just send you a calendar invite and that'll have all, all the stuff that you would need for connecting in it. Awesome. 
Any other final questions, comments, feedback? Okay. Thanks again. That was amazing, amazing experience. Um, okay, so had a conversation with Localization Lab today. I'm guessing that was Matt G. I put that in there. Yeah, it was. So uh, Sally Yang and I had a talk with Localization Lab. So this is building off of our translations work that we had done with folks in China. So we're looking at um, moving forward with Spanish translations and kind of building community from that perspective. Um, so really, this is about how the chaos project can can think more globally about um, not only the things that we produce in the project, but also um, building community around the world. So that's our talk with localization lab just very early for me. I've never talked to them before, so I'm not not really sure uh, the process. Any um, action items or anything you need from the community for that? No, they're going to, so they, meaning folks from Localization Lab, are going to take a look at our metrics and uh, just kind of, I think they just need to become more familiar with the chaos project in general so that we can continue talking. You know what I mean? Just so we kind of, and I need to look at like all the things that Localization Lab does. So I think we both need to, we're both agreed in principle that this looks like something that would be good for both of us to explore. Um, so now I think we just need to do a little homework on both sides. So they would do actually actually the translations themselves? Is that- yeah, sure. This is what's kind of okay. what, we, this is what we need to figure out. And then like how, like a question that I have is like how translations help build community. Cause I don't want to just go down this, this path of just translations for translation sake, like that it's just work to do translations and then we do the translations and it's done. So if I think of our, you know, the folks that are in China that have helped us with translations, there's so much more, more to it than just that. So there's meetups that occur in China, there's um, support with the social, social media in China. Um, there's a lot of community development that occurs there as well to which translations are part. And so localization lab to me is thinking about how we can um, you know, build community in different parts of the world. And translations might be just a, a single part of what that is. Yeah, and it seemed as the case with China, there was like a community already budding and so they had a vested mm -hmm. interest. And so that's kind of what drove the translation. So I totally understand. Yeah, and the like the 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 um the interest from I think people in China is maybe different than the interest in, in different parts of the world, like why chaos is important and why they want to be involved. So I, I think we need to think about this as well. Word. That sounds like a very sensible plan moving forward. All right, um, we have seven minutes left. Do we have anything else to talk about? What else? What else is on your all's mind? Minds. I need Mitty and Precious's email. Okay. If you could just you could send it in chat privately to me or publicly if you don't care that everybody sees it. Either way is fine. Sorry, I stepped off for a minute. I was wondering if I missed anything or someone called my name. <laughs> was that Ruth? Yeah, I said I stepped off for a minute. I was wondering if someone called my name or something. Yes, we did. No, I'm just kidding. We did. <laughs> we were like, where did Ruth go? How dare she leave our meeting? <laughs> I'm, here, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's all good. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess we're finished. Um, you get six minutes back. So good job, everybody, for yeah, participating and showing up. 
I'm really glad to see everyone and we'll see you around on Slack or wherever. See you next week. Yep. Bye. Bye everybody. Bye.